comfy slash x green texts to relax, chill, or study to. Story 1. Suitcase. Been a lurker for a few years, had a few paranormal experiences but this cake's the take. Be me. Moved out of Florida, got a small house with father in North Carolina. He knows the guy who owns it, got a great deal on rent. House was made in 1922. Get here, move my shit in and explore the property. Find the old barn out back, split into two rooms with an attic above. Workshop is full to the brim with 1940s and 50s stuff, some stuff even older. Apparently was sealed up in the 70s and was left to rot. Other room was an empty laundry room. Find the door upstairs, have to push really hard to get it to open. Filled with feet thick of spider webs, I mean so thick it made a giant spider web cotton candy ball on the end of my clearing stick. Easily hadn't been cleared in over 35 years. Cleared it all out by flashlight and stick up the rickety shitty wooden stairs. Pitch black besides one small window, find a really nice old leather suitcase, probably from the 40s. Pick it up and turn around, trip on something and fall downstairs. Hurt left ankle, drag suitcase inside. Kept. Pick related. Get inside, open the case. Small leather photograph book inside, pick related. Inside are a bunch of 1920s candid photos with captions written underneath, many are missing or unlabeled but there are many there. Quite strange photos, we'll post a few. Drawn to this photo of a very thin man in a black suit leaning on an old car, eyes hidden by the brim of his hat. The entire rest of the day I keep feeling like someone is standing over my shoulder. To the point that I actually got pissed off while getting a fork for dinner, because I thought that my roommate was standing over me, of course nobody there. Leaning on the stove, Cat walks in and arches up looking at the breakfast nook, backs out. Fuck that dot web. My father asks me why I was standing in the hallway last night. Double fuck that dot png. I say I wasn't, I was asleep from 10 pm to 6 am. We don't continue the conversation. Flash forward to today. I assumed I tripped over a board or a wire or something. Was digging around in the attic of the barn again, stop at the stairway. There wasn't anything to trip on. No lip, wire, bum, nothing. Completely flat for two feet in every direction. I distinctly remember having my foot that got yanked on something, what the fuck. I get back to dicking with a box of home movies, I pick it up and get to turn around to walk out. I get halfway down the stairs. Foot gets yanked again, like it got hooked on a wire or something. Fall down to the blue metal box, really hurt same ankle. That was yesterday, I can only walk on crutches today. Still nothing on those stairs that could have tripped me. Pretty sure the man in the suit is here. There's a photo of the house in the album, so he and his wife probably lived here. Pick related is the book, we'll post his picture soon. Pick is the box of home movies, I don't have an 8mm projector to watch them though. Pretty sure this faggot is responsible for the strange occurrences, and perhaps even tripping me both times down the stairs. Crutches and foot with Timmy stamp. What should I do? I don't feel very welcome here, not gonna let this lanky little fuckass worry me. A pic of his wife is in here, considering beating off to it to spite that arsehole. Pic related is also in there, quite weird. If you come tribute the pic of his wife, that's sure to piss him off. Lmao. Post proof if you decide to do it. I kinda want to see what happens if I do that. We'll post proof for science. Pick related. Hey pal. Hat in the name of holy Jesus have I gotten myself into? That is the most shameful nut I've ever busted. Take that faggot. Story 2. Meat Piles. Dear slash X and slash K, regular here, but thought this story was more up your alley. My mate, a paramedic was recently walking around a forest off-trail in when he stumbled upon this. 
The area is not too far from a hospital, and apparently a woman had recently gone missing in the area not sure if that's relevant or connected. This took place in Central Europe, so not likely the work of a wild animal. Any thoughts? Story 3, The Mario Kid Can we have a Vidaya Stories thread? At friend's house for sleepover. We played Super Mario 64 all night long. I really like the boss fights with Bowser because of the way Mario throws him. In the morning neither of had slept but we are still playing. His family is awake and going about their morning routines. Friend's cat comes by me and starts rubbing me. Look at cat's tail. Remember Bowser boss battle. Get a great idea. Think it would be hilarious if I threw the cat like Mario throws Bowser. Grab cat's tail. Stand up. Cat claws at me and makes hissing noises. Start spinning. Cat can no longer attack me due to Sentry battle force. Friend yells out what the fuck are you doing? Some of his family comes into the room. Get nervous and embarrassed. Maybe if I finish the joke they will laugh and think I'm funny. Start spinning faster. Friend's dad and friend try to approach me and take the cat away from me. Maximum velocity reached. Scream so long gay Bowser and let go. Cat flies into drywall and hits a stud behind it. Breaks neck and dies on impact. Everyone is speechless. Friend goes to his cat and yells that it's dead and starts crying. Everyone starts crying or yelling. Mom called my parents are divorced to take me home. Put on medication and forced to attend therapy for a long time. Never saw friend again. What's your story? I am literally speechless. Story 4, Perry Man. I remember the story of a dude who went out one night for a smoke in his driveway when he noticed an enormous hairy man step out from in back of a tree about 40 feet away. The man didn't move. He said the creature stepped back behind the tree. Then after a moment a small blue orb shot out from where the being was, and into the nearby woods. This form may be the one they use to capture prey, super stealthy. Story 5, Nighttime Visitor Be me, 12 yo living in Florida with mom. Just moved into this new house in really ghetto neighborhood BC broke. Train tracks behind house, literally 20 feet from back door. Never hear or see trains pass by on tracks. Months pass, sleeping one night. Hear incredibly loud screeching noise like brakes on a train coming from backyard where tracks are. Wake up heart beating out of my chest. Beating so much it hurts. Head pounding. Scared shitless not sure what to do. Yell for mom several times dot don't single quote tee hear me. Walk to kitchen clenching my fists so hard they start sweating. See bright lights outside coming in through the windows. Too afraid to look out of them. Finally reach back door. Stand there for several minutes staring at doorknob. Contemplating what's going on outside. Finally convince Miss F to open the door. Cannot believe to this day what I saw. Scares me still today 8 years later. See long skinny and tall silhouette in from bright white light. Obviously staring at me. Obviously not a regular person, or person at all. Stare for about 20 seconds then slam door and run to my mom. Screaming so loud my mom will wake and hear me. Throw myself under my covers crying. Shaking. Mom doesn't come to room. I stay there shaking and sweating under my blanket for a couple hours. Start to try and sleep. Peek outside and see sunlight starting to come through window. Sit on bed until I hear mom wake up. Tell her whole story. She doesn't believe me and still doesn't to this day. What in the hell did I see? I know I wasn't dreaming. Image not related just expresses the feeling I had when seeing what I had seen. 
Story 6, Dark Room 2014, it started with me and two other guys standing in a dark concrete room. There were pipes all over and a small hatch on the ground. One was holding a video camera, the other a flashlight. I pried open the hatch, which I could now see led to a dark, cramped tube with a ladder inside. The guy with the light tossed a rock in to see how deep it was, and we didn't hear it hit the bottom. He told me that it must be pretty deep, and that this would be a good video. I got the feeling that we were doing this for Halloween or something. Anyway, I took the radio from the camera guy and started climbing down. It was pitch black, and I was really creeped out, so I started doing this weird rapid climbing and I felt really disoriented until reaching the bottom. When I looked around, I saw a large, dark room. It was the lobby to some kind of old hospital, with two staircases on either side that led to a platform. The walls were all brick. I don't know why, but I feel like that's important. A sign above the platform said, 100. Somehow, I was 100 floors below ground. Inexplicably, the room was bathed in moonlight, and as my eyes suggested, I could see the silhouettes of two little girls on the platform, one on each side. I stared at them for a while, and felt extremely uneasy. I started climbing back up the ladder. Every floor above it was the same as minus 100, but without the moonlight, they were almost pitch black. From then on, I saw the rooms, but mostly images, one for each floor. On the next one, I saw the twins from the first area in the same spots, only this time on morgue slabs. The one on the right had her eyes focused on me. I wanted out, and I started madly clawing at the ladder, I started having visions, and images of patient abuse and rioting came flying at me in rapid succession. About halfway up my radio came on, and I heard the flashlight guy's voice. He told me that he was waiting for me on a nearby floor, and that I should stop and go to him. I didn't believe it, and kept going. As I neared the top, the images changed from violence and death to miscarriage and birth defects. Finally after several minutes of this, I reached up while climbing and hit something solid. I pushed the hatch off and climbed back into the room from the beginning. The camera and flashlight guys were standing over me asking what happened, but I was too exhausted to answer. That's when I woke up. Story 7. Annan works at Brunaiken. I was there and let me fucking tell you, Chris Chan was not a welcome guest. Watching this individual walk through crowded aisles and everyone fleeing before him or etc. like frightened animals. Instinctively sensing the crazy pouring off and leaving a snail trail of panic behind, was honestly one of the most surreal things I've ever witnessed. I was working a booth there, the pay was too good to turn down, primarily because no one would ever go back, a few questions, nothing weird. But no matter how hard I try, I can recall nothing except the smell of body odor and a vague sense of panic. It actually feels like my memory is trying to block a traumatic event. I just gripped the table and fought through until eventually, it left. Clearing a 5 foot radius of people through the entire crowd as he went. For fags pushing and crowding to get away. Even if they hadn't seen the oppressor, as if they could just feel the danger approaching. And I didn't know it was him at the time. I found out months later and had fucking flashbacks to the minute of exposure I had. Brunaiken is a hive of depravity and disgust, but Chris Chan was the most horrible among them. I'm never working there again, and he's the sole reason why. I can put up with fur fags, I can tolerate bronies, but that... That was too goddamn much. Story 8. Door Smasher. My alarms go off last night that somebody was in my apartment. Grab gun and open bedroom door. Only 800 SQFT place, so I can see everything. Nobody here, alarms just blasting. 
the arm alarms, walk entire apartment, find nothing, figure weird glitch, put security bar on only door into my place, go back to bed, fall asleep real fast cause tired, only about 1am, wake up to what sounded like somebody punching the fucking shit out of my door, he lies hit fuck dot z, grab gun, scream I have a gun and will shoot you unless you stop, doesn't stop, it was a bluff because obviously I'm not firing FMJ inside of an apartment and risk killing my neighbor. Open door, punching stops, nobody there. Figure this is just some oddly lucid dream and go back to sleep. Nothing happens. Wake up the next day with holes covering my bedroom door. Guys I feel like I am fucking losing it here. I have a security camera facing the front door, the only door, and it didn't pick up anything. Got back from work a few hours ago and I watched the entire thing. I thought ghosts couldn't make physical contact with shit. I've never been a paranormal guy but a part of me has always believed in ghosts. There was no possibly way for somebody to be in my apartment, I cleared the entire place and nobody was there, and there was no way of anybody getting in. What the fuck? Well everyone, this is the end of the video. If you managed to stick around this long then thank you so much. I didn't intend for this video to be a Christmas special, but I figured it's that time of year so what not. I also want to thank you all for helping this channel reach over 3000 subscribers. We're moving further up the ladder. That's incredible. Also I do apologize for not uploading much the past few months, I've been working on overcoming depression and just getting school out of the way, so I can join the army next year. I'm excited. I know this hasn't been a good year for most of us but I hope this was able to help lighten the mood. Also don't worry, I have a 3000 subscriber special on the way. Thank you all again guys, and until next time stay weird.